Are you right now at the verge of giving up on life? Do you battle condemnation and feel inadequate? Is there a part of you that doubts whether God truly loves you? Would you like to better comprehend God's love for you? Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Light. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me, God. You're just the very one for me. Thank you, Jesus. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. Why should I fear when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Why should I keep what people say? Cause they don't know. What do you mean to me? Why should I feel when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Why should I keep what people say? Cause they don't know. What do you mean to me? But I know, Lord, what do you mean to me? Oh, you are the reason I live. You're the one for me, God. You're the one for me. Why should I feel when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Why should I keep what people say? Cause they don't know what you mean. Good morning and welcome to the Covenant Light, our time of devotion to God and His Word. The Bible says, first of all, let prayers be made for all men, especially for those in authority, that they may come to the knowledge of Christ. We're going to be praying for everyone in the world right now. And you're going to be mentioning the country where you are in or the country you feel God has led you to be in as we pray. So let's say this together. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that everyone in Nigeria comes to the knowledge of Christ in the name of Jesus. Let there be a flooding of the gospel of Jesus all around this country that men and women may come to the knowledge of Christ in the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, I yield to you right now. That you help me to pray out these things according to your will in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Le krabada shante le ma soto kobosh. E prato so kole ande le brada shate le gere gendosh. 
e pramba de goto soto fanda ya labaha ke susu frande ke le brado chate le mata kaya da brache e prendo soto logo de blenge le grado sha rakata ya lamante ke rebeko so prande ke le broshata le prozo zo zo frande ke le grado chanta labaha e prande gala bashata le soto foko ya la makata rabaka shakata le protusko prende ke le brando shkente le bakusata e la baya gada bara guso tokoro bokosha e prande gus kale brando shkende le kele gele branda shaka la bada e krozo gado bonde la brate ke le gado shalem bradasha in the name of Jesus we declare that there is a flooding of the knowledge of Christ all over this nation in the name of Jesus that men and women both young and old are coming to the knowledge of the gospel of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Every veil that is covering the eyes of the heart and the hearts of the people in the name of Jesus is taken away. In the name of Jesus, let light flood their hearts. In the name of Jesus, let the light of the gospel flood the hearts of men. In the name of Jesus Christ, let men come to the knowledge of Christ. In the name of Jesus, Kale Pradoshale Galamande Le Protocolo Bokosha. E plente se ke la kate ya la manda ganesh ka la baro bosto. E pleno soto, e pleno sota ya gade ge la basha. La soto ka yiga dange le broto kone ya la baha. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right now, we're going to be taking our confession and praying about the blessing and our finances. Now, this is going to be for us and our family members, those that are close to us and are related to us. And everyone we serve in our, in our different installations. So say with me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess that I, my family members, and everyone I lead, uh, and everyone that I serve in my local assembly, in the name of Jesus, by the reason of our covenant with Jehovah, we are set on high above all the nations of the earth. We are empowered to prosper everywhere we find ourselves. Our offsprings are empowered to prosper. Our possessions are empowered to prosper. Everything we have is empowered to reproduce after its kind so that we experience abundance. Our expense accounts, savings accounts, and investments are overflowing with abundance. We are blessed at all times. I confess that the Lord, our covenant partner, shall cause our enemies that rise up against us to be smitten before our face. If they come against us one way, they shall scatter in seven ways. We are empowered to keep our bank accounts full. We are empowered to prosper in everything we do. We are blessed in this land. Say, I confess that Jehovah God is establishing us unto himself as holy. All the people of the earth shall see that we are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of us. I confess that by God's working, we are plenteous in goods. God opens to us his good treasure, even the heavens to give the rain unto our land in his season. God's blessing is upon all the works of our hands. We lend to many nations. We shall not borrow. We have been made the head and not the tail. Hence, I confess that we shall always and everywhere be above only in the name of Jesus, say, I confess that we are blessed because we fear the Lord and greatly delight in his commandments. Our children are honored everywhere. Wealth and honor are in our habitation. When darkness tries to take over us, light comes bursting in. All goes well for us and we conduct our affairs with, with discretion. We shall never be overthrown by evil circumstances. We shall be in constant remembrance of good done by us and to us by God. We shall not be afraid of bad news, nor live in fear of what may happen, for we are settled in our mind that Jehovah will take care of us. I confess that we shall see our desires upon all our enemies. I confess that our horn is exalted with honor, and the wicked shall see it and be grieved, and shall gnash his teeth and melt away, and their desires for us shall perish in the name of Jesus. Let's pray the Holy Ghost for a moment. Kale brado shalabata e koto plan de gele gete kaya labasha 
e toso pale buroso tingi leanda e prosuta le gabashte la banda la barabaka reposo tokolo boshalta la prede e prando e kolushka lande le brana shata la baha raga ya la bashalte le gede gede e prando zoto kolo broko shokolo broko tosha a reta la bande godo bogoro boko shakata e prando sota e prando so liga lashta we declare that we are blessed in this land in the name of Jesus Everything we lay our hands on to do goes to maturity and prospers because the blessing is upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. We are not small. We are, la- we are enlarged. Our coast is enlarged in the name of Jesus. Because of the blessing that is upon us, our coast is enlarged in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Say with me. Concerning our finances and possession, I confess that we give and it is given back to us with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men are constantly given to us. We sow bountifully and we reap bountifully. I confess that our needs are met and all our bills are paid. We have plenty and more to put in store through the anointing of Jesus. We prosper financially and materially the yoke of lack and poverty in our life uh, has been destroyed uh, completely obliterated uh, by forever by the anointing of jesus we have abundance in all good things uh, that our hearts desires and we are blessed i confess that jesus has been made poor for us uh, and by his poverty we have been made rich i confess that god is making all favor an earthly blessing Come to us in abundance so that always, under all circumstances and whatever the need, uh, we are self sufficient, possessing enough uh, to require no aid or support, uh, and furnishing abundance for every good and charitable donation. I confess uh, that we have abundance and not lack. We walk in the anointing for too much, and it is manifested in the abundance of our possessions. Uh, we have far much more finances and material things that we need so much that we are, tr- we are a tremendous blessing to many. We have wealth beyond natural comprehension. We have mind-blowing abundance. I confess that we have moved from not enough all the way to more than enough. With sight, hence the devourer is rebuked for our sake and all our fears are watched over by God. He is, super- is supernaturally involved in all our affairs, and the windows of heaven are open unto us. God is giving us insights, ideas, and concepts for providing solutions to mankind's challenges, making us wealthy. Say, ministry spirits are, are working on our behalf, bringing us money and materials from far and near, and enforcing our covenant with Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, with Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace and wholeness, with nothing missing, nothing lacking, or nothing broken. And our covenant with Jehovah Gamola, the Lord, our compensation, and our restorer. Say, I confess that we have abundance. We have the minimum monthly income we have set for this month. And in the name of Jesus, angels go forth to gather for us, and men give to us. Our net worth is ever increasing through at such a rate that can only be attributed to the uh, to, to God's working in our lives and not ours. Uh, we can never lack. Our book days are over forever. In the name of Jesus. Angels are released going forth to bring for us from the east, west, north, and south finances, wealth, provision in the name of Jesus, such that we lack nothing good in the name of Jesus. In things money can buy and things money cannot buy, we lack nothing good in the name of Jesus. Because angels go forth and bring in resources to us. In the name of Jesus. 
e prata kala la basha re koto kolo moko so priande li pranasha e prando zo li ande li prada gala ya na masho to la baha o raba tekele be gero bo shanta la baha thank you jesus thank you jesus lord we give you praise we thank you in the name of jesus amen and amen hallelujah glory to god let's your come pastor as it brings the word to us this morning glory to god Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I am so delighted at what God is already doing in our lives. Let's go into the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts. I yield myself to you. I ask that you will think through my mind and speak through my mouth. All of you, none of me. I ask that thoughts and words from heaven will flow freely. To your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. All right. We have quite a lot to cover today, so I'm going to dig right into it. We have, we've been talking about financial increase. And we've said that financial increase in the kingdom, the kingdom way begins with seed um, planting. And then it goes on to watering that seed and then harvesting the seed. And today we are finalizing on the concept of planting, sowing seed. The idea of planting, I'll say again, the idea of explaining kingdom finances through the, the concept of a farmer sowing a seed is not from prosperity preachers or from your pastor. It is from the word of God. God's word, Jesus, alluded to that idea when he said, uh, uh, give, it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. For with the same measure that you meet, it shall be measured back to you. Luke 6 and verse 38. Um, Paul alluded to it when in First Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 9, he said, he that soweth, he said, he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Also in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, it says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. All right. So when you are in the kingdom of God and you are trying, if you are operating the kingdom of God way, I've also mentioned that there are other ways to prosper, but they have their consequences. There is, you can prosper in the kingdom of men just by practicing certain natural principles of diligence and dedication and all that. And if you, and if there is no demonic entity against you and the natural law takes its cause, there is a high possibility of prosperity, but it usually costs. One, it's not insulated from the attack of the enemy. And two, it's it's you usually have to depress something to go up. You you are not designed to just go up. The same way you can't just stand and be elevated and elevate yourself. Something has to lift you up. God designed that man will be lifted. He said, "My horn has thou. Uh, uh, um, my horn shall be anointed, uh, shall be exalted." Uh, uh, um, like the horn of a unicorn, and I shall be anointed. Exaltation happens from God. He lifts, is the lifter up of our heads. He lifts us up. That's why the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and add it no sorrow. It's the blessing that makes rich without sorrow. So oftentimes you find some people depress their health, depress their family. By depressed, we mean that they give up on certain things in order to get certain things. But We've talked about all of that. Today, I have quite a lot to cover, so forgive me if I just dive right in. So we've talked about giving to the poor, talked about giving to your parents. We've talked about giving to your prophet, your man of God. And now we want to talk about giving to your local assembly, the church. The church, the church where you identify as a member and where you vitalize 
the legal reality of your membership in the body of Christ. You are a member of the body of Christ legally, but by being part of an assembly of God's children, you are, you are vitally experiencing that legal reality. All right, so that local assembly where you are part of, you need to give to that place. It's one of the places that God said you should bring um, the things you want to give him, the things you want to sow into those places. So let's look at two things that I that every believer should endeavor at the very minimum to bring to their local assembly. One is the tithe. The second is the first fruits. The tithe and the first fruits. And like I have said at the beginning, this particular, you know, this is a devotion, so it's not a seminar. We're not trying to convince people about the reality of this truth, but rather to give faith to those who already accept God's word to be true. And we give faith so that they can um, exercise faith in the doing of these things. A lot of you are doing it without consciously expecting a harvest, without consciously um, believing based on the scriptures where those things are concerned. So I want to talk about uh, the tithe and the first fruits. So I'm going to begin with the with the tithe. Um, so in Hebrews chapter 7, so let, let me lay it out. The first, the concept of the tithe is actually a priest, a high priest to a people relationship. The concept of the tithe is the receiving of the ministry of a priest. So if every time you find a tithe, you find a priest and a person who is blessed, who is blessed, all right, who is an who is a candidate and a rec or a recipient of the blessing. You find a priest and a person who is a recipient of the blessing. So if you go all the way, some people think that Titan began with uh, Moses and the laws of Moses, but that's not the case. Titan began all the way from Abraham. In fact, when you know you can extrapolate even beyond that to uh, uh, the very Garden of Eden. But the very first mention of that word we know goes all the way back to the time of Abraham. So it was before the law. So it didn't go with the law. Titan is not part of the law. And you will understand as we go on. So you find the first time it's mentioned, we don't have time to go there now. But the scriptures we're going to read today um, the scripture we're going to read today touches that as well. So you find the first time it's mentioned there there was um, Abraham, there was Melchizedek. Abraham was the one who had the promise of the blessing. All right, there was Melchizedek who was the priest, right? And you find the one who had the promise of the blessing bring a tithe to the priest and receive the ministry of that particular priest. And so somewhere in between the spiritual quantity called the blessing and the manifestation of that spiritual quantity, you find a priest. Now, fast forward to the... Um, the time of Moses and Aaron and the law and the children of Israel. So you find you find the children of Israel who, Deuteronomy 28, they were candidates of the blessing. Blessed shall you be when you go out. Blessed shall you be when you come in and all of that. And you find um, a priest. You find the priests who were, who had the ministry 
Now, priests have a ministry of mediation. Priests stand before God and men. So Melchizedek was that to Abraham. The Aaronic priesthood was that for the children of Israel. And so they interceded for them. They interceded for the children of Israel. So because of that intercession, the children of Israel, even though they were not perfect, they still received the blessing. All right. Abraham, with all of his imperfections, um, still received the blessing because of the intercession of Melchizedek. Melchizedek said, blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. So there's always that proclamation from the priest. There's always that, you know, and God told the children of Israel, the priests in the days of Israel, he said, he said this is, I'm, I'm going through these things because um, they are in the scriptures, but we do not have, this a devotion, we do not have the time to open them up one after the other. Um, or you can go search them out. So the same way that Abraham, Melchizedek proclaimed over, um, over Abraham, blessed are thou Abraham of the Most High God. There's something about that proclamation. God arranged for Abraham to encounter Melchizedek. And it was after that you began to see, um, the Bible says, the next chapter, the God that came to Abraham and said, you know, Look everywhere, wherever your eyes can see, I'm giving to you. The blessing, which was a spiritual quantity, took a new dimension. Okay, so moving on to the children of um, Israel, we find that God said to um, the priests, He said, You are, you are, you are, He said, Proclaim these words over the people and by so doing, put my name on them. And what were the words? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord uh, uh, um, cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you uh, uh, and give you peace. All of that, they had words that God gave them to proclaim over the children of Israel. And by proclaiming those words, they, <clears throat> by proclaiming those words, they, fulfill their ministry um, along with other things. And the children of Israel, just like Abraham tithed to receive the ministry of, the Mel of Melchizedek, the children of Israel were required to bring a tithe. Now, in the new covenant, what has changed and what is still remaining? In the new covenant, we are like Abraham. We are recipients of the spiritual empowerment to prosper called the blessing. We have it already. We're not going to have it because we tithe. We're not going to have it because we gave. We are already blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, just like Abraham was blessed, but then God arranged for him to meet. Melchizedek. So we have a priest today, but it's not a priest like the Aaronic priesthood. And time will fill me to go into the, the details of the differences. Um, because this priest is not bringing sacrifice day by day um, to, for each sin we commit. This priest is not coming to make us be blessed. He is coming to a people who are blessed. The order of Melchizedek, the order of the Aaronic priesthood, it was their proclamation. Look at their proclamation. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face. So by doing that, they put the name of God on the people and they bless the people. All right. But the Melchizedek order says, blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor. Abraham, he calls Abraham a possessor of heaven and earth. And so he was talking about being blessed in the sense of possession, in the sense of taking, in the sense of manifestation. All right. And that's the context of the New Testament. When, when, when 
you know, some people say, oh, you never bless anyone in the new covenant. No, that's not true as well. In the new covenant, you can, a pastor can pray for you and bless you. Your, your, your mentor can bless you. And there's nothing wrong with that. And we find oftentimes in the Bible, Paul will say, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Um, is it that they don't have God's grace already? Or is it that the, they don't have the peace of God? The Bible says being justified by faith, we have peace with God. So why is he saying grace and peace be multiplied when they already have peace with God and when they already are recipients of the grace of God? In the new covenant, it's talking about the manifestation of these things. It's talking about these things becoming evident in your life, being multiplied. When grace is multiplied, it's showing up all over the place. When peace is multiplied, it's talking about wholeness showing up in your life, not as a spiritual quantity, but a spiritual one that has brought forth manifestation. All right? So the same thing with blessing in the new covenant. So in the new covenant, we're not, be, we're not being blessed to receive what we did not have, but rather to bring about manifestation, just like Melchizedek. All right. So in the light of all of that foundation, let's now look at the scriptures. All right. So in the new covenant, Jesus is our own priest. So let's look at scripture, the same pattern. For this Melchizedek, Hebrews chapter 7, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Bear with a lot of the details, you know, it gets better as we go on. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abided a priest continually. He's saying that that Melchizedek priesthood continues. All right, let's go on. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tent of the spoils. Abraham tied to him. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood had a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. So you see another tithing again, the Levites taking tithes from the people. That is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham. That's Melchizedek. And blessed him that had the promises. You see, notice that he had the promises, but then he blessed him. You see, that's what I was saying. We have the promise. We have, by, we have received exceedingly great and precious promises, right? We have the promises and we are blessed in Christ Jesus. Watch this. But he whose descent is not counted from them received the of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. So it's after that, our own is after the pattern of Melchizedek. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here, men that die receive tithes, talking about the Levitical priesthood. But there, there, he receiveth them, receiveth, receiveth, present continuous. So Jesus receiving tithes is a continuation of Melchizedek order of receiving tithes. Of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. And and as I may so, so say, Levi also, whom he who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father. Just, just the technicality, just letting you know that, you know, Levi also tithed, right? Because he was in Abraham. So this tithing began before the law. Um, so look at verse 12. Okay, let's, look, let's continue verse 11. We're almost there. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need <clears throat> was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek? You see, another priest has, ar has arisen. But after the order of Melchizedek, it's a continuation of that Melchizedek. Just like you and I are a continuation of the Abrahamic order. We are, Bible calls us, 
we are heirs of Abraham. We are partakers of the blessing of Abraham, right? We are a continuation of the Abrahamic order. Bible says, and ye, as Isaac was, are seed of Abraham. So we are, like, if, if we're going to count it, you will say, Abraham, Isaac, Noel, and you, and every one of us. We follow immediately. Abraham, Isaac, Noel. So we are after that order. And Jesus is after the order of Melchizedek. And so what Melchizedek was to Abraham, Jesus is to us. Watch this. And so he says, for the priesthood being changed. So you see, not the priesthood did not cease. It has been changed. There is made of necessity a change also of the law. So he's talking about how there is now a new covenant because not that the priesthood has ceased, but that because the priesthood has changed. And so that's the very reason why we tithe. We tithe because it was before the law under Abraham. Abraham tithe to a priest, Melchizedek. The Jews tithe to the, the Levites. And we tithe to Jesus. And someone said, well, how do I get it across to Jesus? We're back to what we're saying again. He told us exactly where to send that. Um, the the body of Christ. Remember? That's the statement. That's what the church is called. The body of Christ. All right? So where do you take something that belongs to Christ? To his body. All right? But we're also told to bring it to the local assembly. All right? Okay. So you take it to the priest. All right? You take it to Jesus. You take it to the body of Christ. So the, the tithe you take to your local assembly. We also know that from Galatians, I mean, sorry, Mal Malachi chapter 3. Um, don't be able to read that now. And it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. So where is your storehouse? Where is the place where you go to draw from? Where is the place where you go to receive? That's where you take your tithes to. Whether it is online or on-site. <laughs> Glory to God. You take your tithes to that person who you are drawing from, all right? Not the individual, the storehouse. You take it to the storehouse of that place where you draw from. All right. Glory be to God. All right, so that's the tithe. So what's, what is the benefit? What are you believing for when you tithe? When you tithe, you are believing for, watch this, the ministry of Jesus in full manifestation. What do we mean by the priestly ministry of Jesus? The Bible says he ever liveth to make intercession for us. Pre the, the tithe is an honor seed. It's a recognition. Melchizedek, I mean, Abraham, Melchizedek blessed him. Abraham recognized Melchizedek as priest by the tithe. He could walk away and say, what are you talking about? What's all that? Just walk away. And that it wouldn't have made any difference to him. The, the, the proclamation of Melchizedek would not have made any difference to him. So the recognition of that. So we bring our tithes in honor of Jesus and recognition of him as our priest. And everything that goes with that, from John 17 proclamations that he made, in John 17, the priestly prayer of Jesus for you and I to the ever living to make intercession for us so that our all of the you know issues here and there, I didn't do what I should have done here, I, should, I, I did what I should all of that is all put aside by the priestly ministry of Jesus. Glory to God. The the last one, you know, I know I've, I've rushed this, but like I said, I wasn't trying to convince um, if, if I was I would have taken each scripture one after the other and expounded on them, shown you cross scriptures here and there there may be a time we will do a seminar on this but right now we're having a devotion and I, I'm just here to stir up the faith, I want you to know what you're believing for when you are tightened, those of you that already understand and know and believe in tightened, okay there's one more that you need to, and you need to start planning for that because, um, 
you know, uh, uh, a lot of people don't plan for it. It's called first fruit. And it's the most faith intense giving. In my experience, it's been the most faith intense. It takes a lot of faith to do that one. <laughs> Why? Because when I tithe, I'm tightening up what I already have. I have a hole and I take 10% and I give. So I still have this 90%. I can see it. I can use it. I can plan on it. But first fruits, I'm giving all of the beginning of something without any assurance other than God's word of continuity, without any assurance other than God's word, any promise other than God's word of tomorrow. And a lot of people... Um, because of the nature, the fact that it's it's a very faith intensive given, um, do not practice it. But many years ago, I began to do this. Now, let me say this. Any giving we have talked about today, any giving, whether it is your parents, to the poor, to the church, any one of them, you don't have to. You get to give. You don't have to give. God is not going to come and punish you because you did not give. You see, that's, that's the excess. Some people, you know, and God becomes the Godfather who shows up. Uh, 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 no longer God the Father, but the Godfather who shows up to bring disease in your life because you did not give his son money. Uh, 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 bring uh, 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 curses in your life because you did not give the church money. All of that is not true. Listen, there are a lot of things that are good for us, but we don't have to do. For instance, you don't have to pray. <laughs> I know that sounds funny. You do not have to pray. If you don't pray, you will still make heaven. If you do, and, 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 and you're giving your life to Jesus. I'm talking about those who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If you don't pray, you will still go to heaven. If you don't pray and you don't fast and you don't talk to God for the next for the rest of your life, he will still be your father. So why do we pray? We pray because of the benefits of prayer, not the curse of not praying. God is not going to come and curse me for not praying. God is not going to say, you did, you've not prayed for the last two weeks. Here is a disease. No, no. So in that regard, I do not have to pray. I don't have to pray to get God's favor. I don't have to pray to go, get God to be on my side. He is always on my side. He's always with me. He will never leave me or forsake me whether I pray or not. So why do we pray? We pray because of the benefits of prayer. The same way you don't have to give. The same way you don't have to fast. The same way you don't have... None of these things are demands of God to satisfy his demand. I, I like it. So you're doing it because I like it. I say you should tight. Eh? I say you should tight. Tight. Hmm? What else? Is it not enough that I said so? I say you should give first fruit. Give it. Like, why are you questioning me? That's not the idea. And then if you don't give, say, hey, you won't give tight. Hey, you won't give tight. Okay, you will see now. You're going to get disease. No, that's not, that's not, that is, that is, that is, that is crazy. All right? The very idea of that, of God in that light, is crazy, is asinine, it's demonic. And anyone proclaiming that is helping spread the, what the devil wants to get across. But that's not, that's not what we're talking about here. If you don't pray, God is not against you. But you pray because there are benefits to praying. If you don't give, God is not against you. You don't give to your pastor. You don't give to your parents. You don't, God is not against you because of that. But there is a benefit attached to giving to your parents. You shall be well with you. The benefit attached to giving to the poor. He will make your bed in all your sickness. I read it to you yesterday. Psalm 41. Benefit attached to giving to your prophet. You shall receive the prophet's reward. If you want those things, then you have to do this. Can you see where? If you want the benefits of praying, then you need to pray. If you want the benefits of, of the, your prophet's reward, then you need to give to your prophet. But never equate that to God being angry with you and dealing with you and sending you diseases because you did not do any other thing, including the first fruit, including the tithe and the first fruit. There are benefits attached to each one of them. And if you want them, you do them. Never come under pressure. Never let anybody make you feel that way. I get, you see, I feel like I get to give. I get to sow. I get to give to God. Glory to God. And I get blessed. Oh, hallelujah. You see, I'm not the richest man in the world. 
And a lot of us that, that practice these things are not necessarily the richest people in the world, but you know what we have? We are, we are, we're doing financially, we're fantastically well, yes. But you know what we have? We have a, an assurance of continuity. I don't, when the COVID thing happened, my, my income doubled. My income was doubled, tripled, I think. And, and the church income went to another level. And everyone who practices this, they thought, said the same thing. When everybody was saying, no, there's a casting down, we were saying there's a lifting up. I'm telling you, if tomorrow the richest men in the world lose all of their billions and the whole world is in financial crisis, I will still be talking about the goodness of God and saying there's a lifting up because my what I'm running is not the kingdom of men economy or the kingdom of darkness economy. I'm running the kingdom of God economy. All right. So there will always be abundance for me, one way or the other. If God has to move me out of a location, God has to transform me somewhere in mass. If God has to send me to a, another location entirely, I don't care what he has to do, but I have a covenant that can't be broken, that my needs are met and that my bills are paid. Glory to God. I have stopped here today. Um, I was going to go into the first fruits, but I have spent 30 minutes already. And so I'm going to pray and we'll talk about first fruits tomorrow. Please make sure you join in because, like I said, it's faith intense. But when you break into it, it's, it opens up so much more things. And we're talking about it now in the month of July, which is most of the time most people who receive salaries regularly or something or run a, a year-to-year um, financial income will be doing this in January next year. But there'll be enough time, if you understand it and commit to it, to put aside, you know, savings, um, especially for this, so that I call it first fruit savings, so that you can spend that in, in, in January. And you also be careful about December. There's a reason why the very month before first fruit month is the most capital intensive or expense intensive month. At the end of the day, people in January are owing so much, they're not even thinking about sowing, not even the tithe, not to talk of first fruit. Okay. There's a reason why, and that's one of the things that got me com- com- you know, convinced about it in the first place, was why is it that the very month that I'm supposed to do this first fruit is the month before that I end up owing so much. And I realized that there is a plan behind that. And when I broke that, I broke out. So some things you break and you break out. Let's, let's do that together. All right. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for revelation knowledge. We ask that you will help us live out this truth. Make it obvious to us. Make it resonate in our spirit. And help us live it out in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right. Here comes the blessing right now. In the name of Jesus, let grace and peace be multiplied to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining in. I look forward to have you join me again tomorrow. Till then, remember you are tremendously loved by God. You are unconditionally loved by him. And because of that love, you will experience his wisdom, his power, and his favor as you keep living in the consciousness of the love that God has for you. Do have a wonderful day and see you tomorrow.